Little Nightmares. This is a title that had my interest for a while, but obviously being a smaller indie side-scroller platformer type game, it wasn't necessarily very high on my priority list. Now, being a shorter experience though, it was the perfect fit between some of the longer games I've been trying to get through. So this is my retrospective review of Little Nightmares Complete Edition. When I started this journey, I expected it to be this nice and simple, short, quaint action adventure journey without too much depth. As expected, I was wrong. I mean, it is relatively short, but this game is terrifying. Like, I don't do horror, so I scare easy. And I guess this game isn't a horror game in the traditional sense, but it's still super creepy and strange, yet unique and just a really interesting all-round experience. You're essentially thrown straight in, without any real explanation, and off you go. And I actually love that, because the devs have shown the player enough respect to not dumb things down. I don't think the visuals in Little Nightmares are going to knock anyone's socks off in terms of brute spectacle, but the framing, the scenery, style and lighting all work really well to create the perfect atmosphere. Obviously there's this whole dark and eerie ambience, but there's also this rhythmic swaying and a quaint and creepy quality that's present. The lighting and environment really help to set the mood for this game. I'm not even sure if it's the environment or the backdrop or what, but I feel like there's an almost voyeuristic nature about the framing that really adds to the discomfort. The colour usage is also something that stood out to me. The dull and dirty tones all create that weird beige mood, like it feels old and almost diseased. Like, I mean, even the character designs are worth noting. Each of the enemies look monstrously large and disgustingly awkward, old and grotesque. And in contrast to that, you have the bright canary yellow raincoat of Six, the protagonist. A colour of innocence and youth trapped in this unforgiving and deadly world. And the camera work is actually pretty amazing at framing things, especially to show the size and scale. The developers have really done an amazing job in crafting such a detailed yet unique world with this title. I think something else of note is the lack of a heads up display. Similar to some other games, there's a conscious decision to keep the focus on the world and character and it really serves to keep the player engaged. The art and design of the environment is immensely impressive. It works so well in conjunction with the graphics and gameplay to really add that level of immersion. Virtually every game has a level of environmental storytelling, but the world in this game is so well done it's scary. Like I constantly felt creeped out in this section. I was genuinely just rushing to try and get out of there. Now, the soundtrack. I feel like it's such an integral part of this game because of how much focus there is on the atmosphere. Tarsia Studios really just understands how to leverage both the music and sound design in this game to really create a world worth visiting. And I say visiting because I would hate to live here. There's no booming anthem or epic battle sequence. It's all purely drawn out moody tones and strange sounding tunes. Like this section here is obviously full of suspense, but there's enough build up that it works without the use of some of the more overpowering instruments. It's not often that a game comes through with no spoken dialogue. I mean, sometimes it's because of budget constraints, but I'm pretty sure in this game it's a creative choice because it definitely adds that level of mystery and fear to the characters. Like the shriek of the chefs is just terrifying. This gargling granny is horrific. And the blind long-armed janitor is just so bloody unnerving.
Little Nightmares is not what I'd call a difficult game. I mean, at least not in the conventional sense. It can definitely be challenging at times, but for the most part, it's hard because of the anxiety or stress that's induced rather than the actual skill level required. I mean, the suspense this game elicits is quite impressive. Like it's evident from the trailers, there are many moments where things get intense, but it doesn't necessarily require great mechanics to get through. Having said that, I found that in some ways the camera can start to work against you at times, but in general, it's more akin to a slight annoyance than anything else. There were moments where the depth and perspective combined with the controls played poorly though. Several times I felt like I was trying to climb or jump and I'd be doing it in the wrong direction. Look, I know I'm bad at games, but there were times where it actually felt like this meme here. Jump. Like, I'm sure it's just me, but I definitely felt frustrated at points. The majority of the game will have you traversing the level, evading enemies and completing puzzles. Most of which are pretty interesting. Like, there's small puzzles scattered throughout, but every so often you'll reach a larger area with smaller rooms connected. The player starts in the main hub section, but as you progress, you'll need to complete the individual puzzles and slowly repeat the process until eventually the broader challenge is resolved. I think overall, I just really appreciate the simplicity of it. A lot of games can add too many spells or abilities and just really overcomplicate things. I feel like this game has such confidence, like it knows exactly what it is and isn't afraid to show it. There's a very obvious style when it comes to Little Nightmares that is uniquely its own. One that really pushes the lines between mainstream and abstract. The way the story is told is definitely noteworthy, especially in the space of video games. One of the things that stood out to me is how well it's told with essentially no written narrative or any spoken dialogue, and yet the player understands exactly what the creators had in mind. Through the very basic gameplay, the outstanding environment, visuals and music, a whole world is built with virtually no words. Like most of the side scrollers I've played in the past have this focus on that actiony gameplay, but Little Nightmares just really wants to swallow you up in this awkward and weird world. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is definitely an interactive and engaging video game experience, but the way it draws you in is definitely further out there than some of the more traditional games dare to tread. And for that, I really, really appreciate it. This game actually reminds me of Ori and the Blind Forest. Obviously, they are in themselves very different games, but I couldn't help but notice a few things that were similar. Like there's not too many studios out there that would be A, willing to bank on new IP, just like Ori. B, have no spoken or very little dialogue, like Ori. C, have very unique art styles, like Ori. D are side-scrollers like Ori, and of course E, made by an independent studio just like Ori. Of course, there are also differences though. I'm not entirely sure, and I have to admit I haven't looked into it all that much, but there is definitely some sort of metaphor or symbolism or references scattered throughout this game. From the grotesque and disgusting looking guests to the creepily graceful geisha lady. From the innocent canary yellow raincoat to the eerie environment, there is something more to the whole world. I mean, the game itself obviously makes use of a lot of dark sections, like this but even the well-lit areas give the player a sense of unease and foreboding. Even without any dialogue spoken, it's very obvious there's like a message or something just beneath the surface that's very apparent. I'm sure there's probably a ton of theories floating around on the web already, but there is definitely depth to this game. Like there's some level of social commentary happening on greed or gluttony or excess or overconsumption or something. I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but this section here actually reminds me of the Holocaust or Pol Pot's regime. 
Like these are some of the most chilling images I remember seeing in documentaries or museums. And there's also a key moment near the end that I won't spoil, but it really just shakes things up and definitely caught me off guard. Tarsia Studios have really created a wonderful if not disturbing piece of art with this game. Now, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I generally don't play side-scrollers, and I definitely don't touch horror games. They're honestly just not my type of game. But after trying out more and more side-scrollers, they've really come to impress me, and have really broadened my palette. Like this title is a disturbingly brilliant and uncomfortably good time, and I think it's really worth trying out. Little Nightmares Complete Edition is still worth playing in 2024. If you've managed to sit through this whole video, thank you so much for watching. I'm still looking to upload a brand new video once a fortnight, but be sure to let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully, I'll catch you in the next one.